If a doctor had discovered a cure for cancer or for AIDS and refused to share that with the people beyond his circle of family and friends, we would consider that criminal. Not sharing the power of the gospel and the sacraments with our neighbors is also criminal. The operative parable is the story of the man who buried the shining talent in the ground. This was condemned as an act of cowardice and selfishness. Our task, our challenge, is to turn consumers into disciples and disciple-makers. We need to prepare men and women who witness to the faith and not send people into the witness protection program. As the bishops wrote in Go Make Disciples, every Catholic must be a minister of welcome, reconciliation, and understanding to those who have stopped practicing the faith. Our Catholic people are so generous in fulfilling the corporal works of mercy. The Catholics of Boston respond in an incredible way, supporting the missions or coming to the rescue of victims of natural disasters. When I was in the islands and our diocese was devastated, it was the Catholics of Boston who responded first with a helping hand, both with money and by sending a priest, Father Brian Kiley. Our Catholic people must come to see that people's spiritual hunger and starvation must be the object of our mercy, our concern, and our out outreach. The first way to do that is to be a welcoming and gracious community. Often people who have moved away from the church approach with fear and trembling. We must put them at ease. Andrew Greeley who has not had an unpublished thought, even the bad ones, mused recently, I wonder often whether parish staff members and priests ought to have a course from the people who administer the Four Seasons hotel chain on how to be friendly and attractive to the people they welcome to the sacraments. As it is now, it often seems they've been trained by the U.S. Postal Service. I'm sure the Boston Postal Service is much friendlier than Chicago's, but the point is well taken. Beautiful liturgies, good preaching, and effective sacramental preparation programs are so important. As a pastor, I am ashamed to say I did not have an RCIA program because I thought, well, all the Spanish and Portuguese people were baptized. <clears throat> but none of those who come to participate in our rite of election here on the first Sunday of Lent can help but to be impressed by Father Paul O'Brien and Father Jorge Reyes, whose parishes each send 50 or 60 new Catholics every year. In the new millennium, Business as usual is not enough. Priests of the future cannot be the Lone Ranger, and they can certainly not be the Maytag repairman. We must be a team of missionaries, moving from the maintenance mode into a missionary one. Last month I was privileged to be with the Holy Father when he declared the year of the priest to mark the 150th anniversary of the Cure of Ars. What a great gift. We need this more than ever in light of all that our priests have suffered. I know that this time of prayer, reflection, and planning will help all of us to be renewed in our priestly ministry and launch us as priests with the missionary heart of the Good Shepherd. The curé of ours once said to a fawning visitor, the Queen of Sheba expected too much, but you, madam, 
The Queen of Sheba expected too little, but you, madam, expect too much. Sometimes we are the same. We don't expect enough of Christ, and we rely too much on ourselves. The cure of ours was sent to that backwater parish in a town with one tavern for every ten houses. Sounds like South Boston. <laughs> he was sent there for one reason, and one reason alone. The pastor there was the only one in the diocese willing to accept such a lackluster curate. Yet the curé of ours was a great priest because he loved Christ. He was in love with his priesthood and with the people he was sent to serve even when they didn't love him. It is that love that makes our vocation so fraught with hardship. To love it all is to be vulnerable. Love anything and your heart will break. As C.S. Lewis says, if you want to keep your heart intact, give it to no one. Wrap it carefully with hobbies and little luxuries. Lock it up in the coffin of your selfishness. Then your heart will not be broken, but it will become unbreakable. Someone once wrote to a, fa a famous rabbi, the Lubin Victor Rebbe, saying, I would like the rabbi's help. I wake up each day sad and apprehensive. I can't concentrate. I find it hard. I keep the commandments, but I find no spiritual satisfaction. I go to the synagogue, but I feel alone. I begin to wonder what life is about. I need your help. The rabbi sent the letter back, underlining the first word of each sentence, and it was always the same one, I. This is the unhappiness of the lonely, autonomous self. We must learn to say we and to be we. There's a Zulu proverb, I am because we are. We are not alone. We are Christ's body. We are his presbyterate, his missionaries, anointed and sent to share the good news of God's love with the poor and with everyone that God puts in our path. May this year of the priest be a time for us to repair the nets together so that we might better carry out the mission that the Lord has given us. Pope John Paul II says in the Redemptoris Missio, faith is strengthened when it is given to others. A missionary spirit can unite and energize our church. Christ is the missionary of the Father, and we are his missionaries, fishers of men, not keepers of the aquarium. May Mary, the mother of the Good Shepherd, help us to be good priests after her son's own heart. Amen.